invite you all warmly to today's fourth P.S. Srinivasan Krishna. Memorial Lecture. P.S. Krishna Memorial Lecture. And uh, it's about the social responsibility of the civil servant. So very relevant uh, topic uh, in today's scenario because this social accountability, as we see, is declining over the time since 90s. And then we know how committed the civil servants were earlier. And then during the 60s, 70s, and then till the 80s, we had uh, totally dedicated uh, um, civil servants to the public cause and the, particularly the disadvantaged downtrodden sections of the society. And um, we have a distinguished speaker today, Professor Chalamgaru, to address us. And uh, he is a renowned educationist and uh, a reformist. <laughs> he is a social activist and a well known academician throughout the country and served as the member and the in charge of the Union Public Service Commission, Government of India. Sir, we look forward to your speech. And then, Madam Sunita, we welcome ma. We are eager to listen about uh, P.S. Uh, Krishna's uh, life story from you. And uh, this is presented by the chairman of uh, Center for Religious Studies, Sri Malapali Lakshmi Garu, and uh, chairman of the SAST Officers Forum, Sri Kaki Madhuragar IAS, former Chief Secretary of Combined AP State, and then Korvi Vinay Kumar, he is the National President of Dalit and Bahujan Pran. And uh, on this occasion, uh, we are also going to present a cash report of 10,000 to one social tribe girl, Miss Dharavat Tai Harisha, daughter of Ram Kumar. In the name of uh, Amma Srimati Kaki. Is it your trying to Manikima. record your. Manikima Shobhanagri. She is the mother of Sri uh, Kaki Madhuragar. And uh, this is given uh, in promoting the much vital education among the marginalized communities installed in her name. And uh, it will be presented by Sri Madhuravari. And with this uh, a few words, I am I take great pleasure in inviting you all to this uh, memorial lecture. And then it's up to Sri Siddhoji Raugaru to continue. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kanakras Garu. Now I would like to request uh, uh, Srimati K. Sunita Garu, IAS, Principal Secretary, Government of Andhra Pradesh, to speak about uh, P.S. Krishnan Garu. And I would like to thank her, who is very much interested to speak about P.S. Krishnan Garu. Thank you, Madam. Please, Madam. Hello. 
Yes, sir. Thank you, Sushma Garu. Uh, my respects to Kankaraj Garu, okay. Chandru, Malipali Lakshmi Garu, Madhavra Garu, Korivi Vinay Kumar Garu, uh, who's here, and my fond uh, regards to uh, Shubha Shekhar Garu and Madam Krishna Garu, who are also attending this uh, um, meeting, and all the rest who are uh, here. Um, it, it has been a proud privilege for me to uh, know and work with uh, Krishna Garu. Uh, one for an administrator uh, throughout their lifetime, they meet hundreds of officers and they work with some, they fight with some and uh, they are always seeing these officers perform and uh, they are subject to various judgments. Amongst them, very few of them actually touch their respect or their ad admiration. And uh, for Andhra, it has been very fortunate to have officers like Krishnan Garu, Shankaran Garu, who are universally respected. And uh, respect is a small mm -hmm. word for what I him. Yeah. And uh, I just uh, thought that all of you all would be having a lot of idea about what he has done. But I would like to just go through uh, a few of uh, my interactions with him. Uh, as all of you all know, Krishnan Garu was of 1956 batch. And uh, he, oh, sorry, he had done his um, MA, LLB and Diploma in Linguistics, which is very interesting uh, in those days. So he could converse very easily in uh, Malayalam, English, Telugu. And uh, if you have uh, the fortune, uh, uh, fortune to see the website, uh, pskrishnan.org created by his uh, son-in-law, you would see his speech there uh, in the uh, apart uh, uh, thing on subplan. Um, and there he articulates so well in Telugu that I can tell you that today no officer from outside the state can speak so fluently in Telugu as uh, Krishnan Garu did. And his whole um, commitment, I mean, I thought it was because he had worked for so long in the um, welfare departments that his uh, commitment to be when you work in a certain department officers generally own up that uh, department so i thought it was because of that but when i read his book um, the um, where he has mentioned bending governance to meet the needs of the underprivileged it was it was a revelation for me that he was thinking about these issues even before he entered service from as early as he was 11 years old where he thought about caste how unequal it is and uh, how he always wanted to do something to see that those people who were oppressed by the uh, forward sections all through the centuries were, um, you know, brought to the, uh, uh, brought on par with the rest of them. He always just didn't speak about just trying to uplift them, but trying to always say that in a sub, if you talk about subplan, then he would always say that it should be in such a way that the fund should only meet the scheduled caste population, not just a fund which helps everybody, but exclusively these people. It should be it should be concentrated towards their education, their health, and so on and so forth. Um, I was like any other officer in the 1990s when I joined uh, the service, where people keep telling you that you know the uh, scheduled castes and scheduled tribes are unnecessarily getting reservations; they don't deserve it. They're just lazy people. They are, uh, they are, uh, they are the most corrupt people, officers in the thing, and so on and so forth. And I, when I joined with a fresh mind, and I saw in my subdivision that the officer, the tasildas who I found were not working were actually SCs and SDs, and the tasildas who were caught in the uh, corruption cases were SCs and SDs. I was trying to understand whether what society's ideas were were really true or not. And when you ask some officers, uh, why uh, the mm -hmm. class and scheduled tribe should be, you know, um, not nurtured mm -hmm. so much. Uh, then the, Siddhujigar, I can hear you. So could you mute it? Could you mute your uh, record, please? Yeah. Uh, so, so then, you know, people just say out of emotion, they say that you are born here, so you should do that. But then, when you see a reddy or a kamma doing that, and then you say, oh, these reddies only help themselves, these kammas only help themselves. So how can it be right for an SC? This was the turmoil I always had when I was a young officer. 
and when i i happened to work with krishnan garu he explained in such a logical manner that after that it was very clear to me he he said see it is not because you are born there it is not because this is a community but look at the constitutional safeguards it, the constitution safeguards and nurtures them and says that you can you can give education and health and other things and other welfare measures to these uh, communities then he said look at their literacy look at their um health status they look at their malnutrition everything these are the lowest wherever cases are there look at the people who are affected the most it is these people rape or uh, uh, punishments and uh, you know everywhere it is these people who are affected and then even when it comes to uh, bribes and other things it is not as if the other officers don't take bribes it's, it's because this community does not <laughs> have the wherewithal to protect themselves and then he built this rational so nicely that from that day i could easily explain to others that this is the reason why there is a need for commitment to the uh, minus minority sections and this naturally cascaded into not only the sc the st but when it came to the uh, bc sections I, i also want to talk about this because uh, uh, i was asked to do the vadara corporation form the vadara corporation and i was thinking this is a political uh, uh, this thing and then i went to him he said no no ma this vaduras are really backward and then we did a study on them we found we did a uh, he advised me on how to do the whole step and we went around and we did a survey on them and we found them really staying in very very bad circumstances and we realized that it was worthwhile doing this corporation and then i formed the corporation out of commitment not just because the government had said this similarly when i was asked to work with sir for muslim reservation a uh, muslim reservation government had given because it was a political promise and then the court had stuck it down because there was no proper rational as to why it was given and then sir was asked to do this and then sir became the advisor and he did not take a single rupee from the government he said i will be an advisor i will not take any payment and he started this work and he prepared this volume on uh, how and why the rational of uh, uh, the muslims the uh, the socially and backward uh, muslims needed the reservation and there also one could see his uh, i i just want to digress to say that there are many people who talk about things but there are very very few people who actually you know are the same whether you talk to them or whether you see their work or like they say you walk the talk so he was one of them so he had the guts to say that i will give muslim reservation but i will not give it to those who are the forward communities among the muslims and he convinced the political people the muslim uh, leaders like obiasi as i remember we met asaduddin obiasi and all of the other muslim leaders that see these are the communities who are already uh, they are there and they don't really require this and that is the kind of uh, uh, quality which is very rare among officers because you you either give reservation or you don't give reservation you give reservation and then say these are the communities which can be excluded from that and that was a very great thing and he had the art of convincing people and the patience to convince people and uh, his patience was so good that i remember that even during the uh, after the reservation was given or during the process uh, i was asked to do a, a, a state government's report and uh, i had no experience of it earlier and i had just done some report in which my Uh, boss was not very happy he told me see um, i know you are a committed officer i know you do well but see even shankaran can't write a report so you are also one of those who can work but you can't write a report and uh, that shattered me but then shank uh, krishnan sir sat with me day after day corrected the english corrected this uh, structures and kept on every page by page para by para he corrected the whole thing and sort of guided me as to how to write a report and there was a time when i i uh, i and my boss had a problem and uh, uh, and i said if this part is to be removed my boss wanted me to remove the socio economic report and i said if this part is to be removed there will be no rational as to why this uh, uh, you know uh, reservation has to be given so i i will refuse to submit this report and krishnan garu was so patient he uh, intervened on behalf of my boss and me and said no this has to be you know kept because uh, she feels very strongly about it and this is also the rational uh, for the reservation and uh, 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 this was kept and the report was completed even after the report was completed and reservation was given when the matter was uh, challenged in the court 
very few people actually uh, go and meet the ag uh, advocate general or uh, even uh, bother about this because they would have said as advisor i have given this advice i have prepared this report you have given reservation and my work is done but krishnangaru would travel all the way from delhi meticulously he would meet the ag one day before brief him on all the points brief him on all what he thought and then next day go to the court he was 70 plus those days and he would go to the court and he would sit just behind the ag's uh, uh, chair and then during the questions uh, court session he would keep uh, uh, giving his input to the ag and saying this is what we can say this is how we must say and this is how it was supposed to be and somebody of the advocate general then was mr mohan reddy and he was not a small man he was a towering personality himself but the way he would receive krishnan because he had so much of advice uh, admiration for his work his integrity and his knowledge that he would always listen to him and allow himself to be you know be influenced by him i saw sir also talked to the solicitor general different people the way he would approach them it was not a kind of thing where he would say that i know i am right so i'm going to do this it was always like taking the people along with you uh, not leaving the politicians or the uh, or the advocates or anybody but just brainwashing each of them on the way and uh, 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 you know making them see the light another uh, sterling quality of him which i found was that he generally there's a, a, a if an officer is very good he has a lot of contempt for other people um, this person is like that they they may speak to you front in front of you they may speak to you very nicely but at the back there's always this contempt and this arrogance that you are superior to this person but in krishnan sir i have seen that he was always very empathetic he would tell me see this person is like this because of his background had he had a good background he would have been a different person so he made me understand that if an sc officer or an st officer or somebody looks very raw and very unfinished it's not because he wants to be like that it's because his family was from a very um, you know a very small background and uh, uh he never taunted them he never corrected them and even if an officer came and asked advice which most most probably would be me because i always went to him for advice on various issues he would say uh he would never say start the conversation by saying see when i was the officer i did this he never said that he would always say because see when when somebody says this when i was the officer i did this this now you were officer 30 years back 40 years back but those circumstances were different but today the circumstances are different i mean you cannot have the same answer for the same uh, you know uh, question the answer has to put in with the existing scenario with your personality and things like that and he never said that he always said see this is the existing situation this is the pros of doing this this is the pros of doing that and <clears throat> this is what you know is i think you should be doing and that was like a very clear picture where you actually understand how to analyze things and find the right way through and <clears throat> so uh, then he would also ask people um, what is your caste which i thought was very shocking but then i realized that he is asking the caste not just to find out whose caste it is but to understand the background and the you know the reason why a person is like that and it made so much of sense because each person behaves differently in india because of their background their community their uh, you know their uh, family and their work finally all this shapes a person and that that is how they make their decisions and this i found was what he used to uh, do and there is uh, this uh, uh, another another very nice uh, about him is that he did so much of work and he never said this is my work i, I mean there are a lot of people who don't want to share their work it is like especially i i'm and the handloom uh, i work with the handloom workers now and artisans who would not want to share their knowledge and send it to the other people they would want their knowledge to die with them or in their family but sir was not like that in the apart uh, um, speech if you see he says that i'm willing to share my knowledge i'm willing to share my notes i'll give it to you and there was so much of openness in, in him and he kept all that uh, this thing and <coughs> excuse me and there was so much of clarity on issues and uh, thoughts on any issue he would start from the constitution to uh, uh, what the uh, the um, you know this uh, what is the situation and how uh, things move and how it has to move and uh, uh, that's probably because 
he like he himself said in his book that he was a blend of ideologies of gandhi uh, ambedkar narayan guru vivekananda periyar marx all of them very very different and i think that made him a more complete person and uh, um, he has done a lot of good things and one of them was how he started the uh, uh, the uh, i think he he was even he had i mean i heard my father saying that he even uh, uh, influenced uh, uh, shankaran into uh, visiting uh, the uh, sc bastis and uh, uh, staying there and eating with them and <coughs> what he called the kanuvippu where he camped with them and uh, um, did a lot of work and he instead of bringing the underprivileged to the administration he brought the administration to the underprivileged bastis and which is something i think which today is not really possible and uh, uh, but then i would say that if he did it then there's a lot of uh, things which can and uh, be done in the future also and uh, he uh, uh, in his this things also spoke about how he got the certificates caste certificates issued to the uh, yanadis in the village itself and he did a lot of other work like the sub plan and, and i remember his remark he said plan is for humans sub plan is for less than humans. so it should always be a plan and not just a, you know a, a word called sub plan and things like that where his whole thought process was so so um empathetic so uh, broad minded and uh, coming from a person who was who belonged to a forward community who never articulated his community but who was so empathetic i mean that was a, a very uh, strange combination and today I always say that when a brahmin or a forward community person or a non scst person shows his commitment and works committedly for the poor then everybody thinks it is the right thing to do but when an sc or st person works for the commitment of sc and st because the constitution has said so because they are the most underprivileged persons and most marginalized sections of the society still people will say oh they are doing this because they are you know they belong to that community not because it is right but because they belong to that community so i think he gave that kind of respect to the whole uh, thing and uh, uh <coughs> i know this kind of work was not really possible without hard without having a a very uh, committed uh, family behind i thank madam who was there for uh, him always and i remember uh, him uh, 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 i remember her cooking for him looking after him she would even come for the cases and be there as a strong support and uh, uh, another thing uh, uh, i would like to talk about him is how he was uh, so good to his uh, children grandchildren and all that and he chose to stay in delhi though it is not a really uh, a very nice place for older people uh, not so much because uh, i think he wanted to be there but because uh, uh he uh, his daughter had settled there and uh, i uh, would like to close with this saying that uh, uh i uh, i have uh, sent his book to my uh, eyes of his group and i said that for those who did not have the uh, good fortune of having worked with him or uh, uh or uh, you know reading his uh, knowing about him this book would actually tell everything and i'm really glad that uh, mother garu has asked krishnan garu to write this book because it is so clear and so ba- so uh, well written that uh, it's a very ra- rare combination that an officer is uh, who can write who can speak so well uh, and uh, who can, who's an idealist and who walks the talk and uh, i i i'm uh, genuinely um uh, thankful for having uh, met this person and worked with him though in my initial when i met, first met him as a young uh, um, child i remember him as a very uh, 
you know stylish uh, officer with sideburns and uh, well dressed uh, well uh, you know well articulating and kind of thing but when i worked with him i realized a whole new facet and uh, that that is the, the other facet which i uh, actually treasure and i close with the uh, bill gates quotation uh, which said that as we look ahead into the next century leaders will be those who empower others and i think uh, krishnan garu did that he empowered a lot of uh, officers and uh, uh, people and i remember that uh, mrs krishnan once said that when uh, sir fell sick when he was in andhra all of them just came around and looked after him and she didn't need to call anybody at all everybody was there just there and uh, she really understood how uncle instead of uh, uh you know earning all that money like a corrupt officer had earned all the goodwill of all the not only the officers but the people and especially the underprivileged people thank you and uh, uh, thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to talk thank you uh thank you uh, thank you so much madam uh in fact it's a uh, you really enlightened us and uh, uh it's uh, your experience with ps krishna is really amazing and uh, i am really touched by your admiration for ps krishnan madam thank you so much madam now we are going to have a lecture by uh, professor k s chalam garu uh, on uh, ps krishnan and the social accountability of civil servant now i am going to uh, read a brief profile of professor k s chalam garu da- professor dr k s chalam member chair union public service commission during 2005 to 2011 is well known political economist educationist and a scholar of studies on human development he has successfully completed 6 years tenure on 1st june 2011 and on the last day acted as a chair as a senior member of upsc cabinet rank uh, cabinet secretary rank he led an official delegation to australia to study the functioning of the federal service commission and the recruitment policies at the commonwealth and in the state in the states of australia his book on governance in the south asia state of civil services by sage is a valuable contribution to promote excellence in the system he is a founder editor of south india journal of social sciences now he heads the panchashila foundation trust hyderabad and he is a chairman of Uh, chairman of institute of economic and social justice visakhapatnam sorry professor k s chalam chalam is a versatile scholar with a flair for social and human rights and social activities as an economist he has published books on economic policy and participated in debates on dalit poverty at international conference he was associated with the right to food conference organized by national human rights commission as a special report as a special reporter of south zone 2 he was national secretary amnesty international indian section during 1984 85 he was a member ncri mhrd jury member dr b r ambedkar award government of india etc his forthcoming book on social economic economy of development in india by sage international is first of its kind in the social sciences as it has refreshed 19th century ideas of sismondi and integrated them with indigenous thinkers of india he served as a vice chancellor dravidian university kuppam andhra pradesh he is known as founder of academic staff college scheme in the country as its first first director and worked as the first director of swami ramananda teetha rural institute of, institute in budan pochampalli ap he was the recipient of ugc young so- social scientist award in economics in 1984 man of the year 1985 kalinga seema award etc he taught in the department of economics andhra university as a lecture reader professor between 1974 and 2000, 2005 he has supervised nine twelve scholars in economics for obtaining their phds he was on the planning board of planning board of madhya pradesh government as a member during 2002 to 
He has published so far 24 books in English, including 10 books on education, 8 in Telugu, 100 research papers in reputed journals, and more than 200 edit page articles in Telugu. Most of his books are used as a textbooks and widely discussed and reviewed. He got his diploma in planning from Warsaw and he has traveled extensively in more than 16 countries on academic pursuits. He has specialized in economics of human development, political economy, Dravidian studies. Professor Chalab was an academic activist in the area of education, culture, human rights, environment, etc. He delivered the presidential address at the 32nd, 32nd annual conference of AP Economic Association in 2013 and valedictory address of uh, annual conference, uh, 17th annual conference of Indian Political Economy Association at the University of Hyderabad, Hyderabad. He served as a joint secretary, AU Teachers Association, secretary, Vishaka Writers Association, voluntary action for sustainable sustainable environment etc is is okay. being associated with several international organizations like dfid bic etc he was special reporter south zone nhrc government of he is now president of all india progressive forum delhi sir i would humbly request you uh, to give lectures sir thank you sir <laughs> thank you thanks that's a bold uh, my dear friend, uh, Lakshmi Garu, esteemed Madhara Garu, Madam Sunita, Dr. Kanakras, Dr. Siddhoji Rao, family members of P.S. Krishna, uh, viewers online and friends. I am grateful to both Lakshmiya and Madhara Garu for giving me this opportunity to speak on this occasion about P.S. Krishnan Garu and the civil service situation today. Uh, I remember I was introduced to P.S. Krishnan Garu by Madam Santa Krishnan because I used to participate in the 90s and 80s, late 80s. In the academic seminars, I met her in some seminar in Delhi and uh, she introduced me to P.S. Krishnan. For the last almost more than three decades, till his death, we have been in constant touch. And I'm happy after listening to uh, Madam Sunita's testimony about the kind of work that uh, P.S. Krishnan has done. I need not explain to you what is P.S. Krishnan. Uh, I, I think uh, there are many other great civil servants in our country. But we remember P.S. Krishnan because he's the only one who has carried the memory of the social welfare department of government of India. In fact, we you know Madhara Agar is also chief secretary, he's several chief secretary. And you know, Dr. Padmanabhan was Chief Secretary of Tamil Nadu, worked under MGR, and he became a member of the Union Public Service later and governor. And we also know about Mata Prasad, Dr. Mata Prasad, a great civil servant, coming from Delta community from Uttar Pradesh. And he worked as a Chief Secretary of Uttar Pradesh, both with Malayam Singh Yadav and Maria Vati. In fact, there was an interesting tussle between Sitaram Kesari and William Singh Yadav. When he was the Secretary of Social Welfare, William Singh Yadav wanted him as the Chief Secretary of uh, Uttar Pradesh. But ultimately, he chose as Chief Secretary of uh, Uttar Pradesh. He worked with Mayavati, had some problem, and came to Delhi again. And it was thought that he would become the first Cabinet Secretary of India. But it was not done. He joined the UPS as a member and became the chairman. He's so gracious. When I joined the commission, he came to me personally and congratulated me. Why I'm saying is this, we all know that there are very great people in this civil service. 
But we remember Tristan or Sankaran or B.D. Sharma, with whom I have also worked as a member of the Madhya Pradesh Planning Board. They are unique. Unique in the sense that given the sort of background, because P.S. Tristan never said anything about his caste. He said he had an anti-caste marriage. In fact, I had also an anti-caste marriage. In 1972, when I was a student, Gora, you know, Gora of uh, Vijayawada, he got me married. It was also an anti-caste marriage. But uh, Tristan never said anything about his caste. It seems from the days of his school, when he talked about uh, untouchables with his father at the Padmanabha Swami temple, till his death, it's not just 60 years, 70 years, uh, a period of uh, uh, civil service in which he has done a lot of work for the Dalits. He has somehow developed a liking for social justice. Therefore, he has been continuing with that mission till his end. That is the uniqueness of P.S. Christian compared to other civil servants. Uh, I have deliberately chosen the topic of social accountability. Because social accountability is now popularized by the World Bank from 2004 and being implemented in states like Andhra Pradesh, Rajasthan, other places. Social audit, Vagaira, Vagaira. This social accountability is different. The social accountability is about government projects. But the social accountability of a civil servant is different. A civil servant is a creature of the constitution. It is through Article 308, 309, 10, 11, and through the womb of the Union Public Service Commission. They are born. They are different from other citizens. Therefore, civil servants have a responsibility. What is the responsibility? They have responsibility to the constitution. In fact, uh, people don't remember these things nowadays. The young, the young uh, ser civil servants do not remember. They don't even care for the constitution also. But it was after 1951, All India Services Act, the government keep on uh, issuing the rules, conduct rules. In the 1968 conduct rules, it was clearly mentioned what are the functions of the civil service. Therefore, on the basis of the functions of the civil servant, we need to assess a civil servant and his uh, uh, caliber. It is noted uh, in uh, All India Services, Rule 3. First is high ethical standards, integrity. And number two, political neutrality. And more importantly, it's not only for the Dalit or reserved candidates, but it is for everybody. Accountability and transparency, and importantly, responsiveness to the public, particularly to the weaker sections. This is a part of the duties of the civil servant. And in 2B, commit himself to and uphold the supremacy of the constitution and democratic values. How many civil servants? Because uh, I worked in the uh, service commission, we know all kinds of things, all kinds of things are happening in the civil services. And we do not get the kind of civil servants that we had about 30 years ago, 40 years ago. The things have changed. We can't blame the civil servant. We have a lateral entry. Last week I was in the UPSC, and the chairman was telling about the pressure that he is receiving for the later entry of civil service. I is at the joint secretary level, the people are coming into the service. That is a different issue altogether. But P.S. Kristen joined the service in 1956. That was the beginning of the planning era. So battery farming loans. That was the beginning of uh, the planning era. And uh, that was also the beginning of the 
reconstruction of the economy. Several civil servants joined, like mother and others, have joined in different uh, domains. In fact, uh, the first administrative commission has identified eight uh, domains, including social welfare, rural development, planning, finance, economic uh, affairs, etc. And later, uh, that is also extended to the latest uh, Moili Committee, uh, Second Administrative Reforms Commission. Three more domains are added. Why we are talking about P.S. Krishnan is that he never chose to go to other domains. He has remained to be a civil servant in the social justice domain. Therefore, we can see his commitment to the welfare of the not only scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, and backward classes, but also women. But remember that uh, the scheduled, the categories of scheduled caste and backward classes are not uniform throughout the country. Some backward classes in one state become scheduled caste in other states. Some scheduled caste in one state becomes a backward class. For instance, uh, Karnataka and the neighboring state Andhra Pradesh. Some, some castes in Karnataka are tribes in some states, and the same tribes are cast in other states. Therefore, Christian knew this at the all India level. And therefore, he worked for the scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, and the backward classes as the marginalized community. He, he, perhaps he was influenced by the, uh, the kind of uh, government, the kind of social uh, reform movements that took place in Kerala, Narayan Guru. I was thinking that he was a, uh, I have a uh, uh, mistaken view that uh, Sankaran was a Malayali and uh, San Christian was a Tamil, but it is the other ones. But otherwise, uh, otherwise also, uh, uh, Kerala is uh, for a long part of time, part of Madras presidency. People say that, uh, I never had a time to discuss with him, unfortunately. Uh, People say that Malayalam is nothing but Tamil with more Sanskritized language. But whatever it may be, uh, Kristen came from Kerala and he had the advantage of learning about the reform movements and also at the same time in Trivandrum, how the Dalits were treated in those places uh, and all that. And the revolt that took place in Kerala from Narayan Guru, Ayyan Kali and others. But anyway, that... Uh, Kristen has carried the vision of emancipating the scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, and backward classes till his life. That's why we remember him. We consider that uh, uh, Kristen, had there been no officer like Kristen, things would have been different because he was there in the ministry in the crucial period while formulating the the policies of the government of India, either through the planning commission, uh, or the TSP and the special component plans, or while designing the, uh, uh, what is called uh, prevention of uh, atrocities, the POI Act 1989, and all that, Christian was there to, to see that the correct language is put in the act. That way, Christian was uh, a great, uh, officer and uh, a great friend of weaker sections of this country. Friends, uh, I really wanted to say something relating the social accountability of uh, the civil service. This is time that uh, we should reflect on the civil service in India. Social accountability means, as I noted uh, already, can be evaluated through the what the World Bank calls the tools. Tools like uh, uh, participatory planning and uh, going to these uh, rural areas, meeting the people, talking the social audit and all that. That is done because this has happened because two important national programs, Sarvashi Shabiyan, National Rural Health Mission, uh, are found to be misused and therefore they have introduced me. There's no doubt about it. I, I don't have any uh, doubt. Uh, but social accountability of a civil servant 
is to his there are public accountability there is the private accountability and there is also a accountability to the conscience accountability to the conscience is different because it's not seen private accountability is not important public accountability is through there are various institutions through which we do it there is a parliament there is annual uh, acs there is uh, in terms of the huge indicators, human development indicators, poverty indicators, and how the work of a civil servant help in reducing some of the evils of the society. That's important in terms of the functions that they are supposed to do. In that context, we may look at what system has done to the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes and even backward classes. In fact, he has uh, published he used to send all his writings and papers to me online. I have seen some of them. He has published also some books, very good books. In fact, uh, his uh, biography is written by, no, we can't say the biography, written by Vasanthi Dega. I think I met her long back. Her daughter, Ajanta, has published a wonderful book. She's in Harvard. Uh, Ajanta has published a wonderful book, Merit of Class, Cast of Merit. It's a wonderful book on uh, IITs, how the IITs are. Uh, functioning in India, how the caste system is uh, functioning. In fact, I was in Delhi in the commission and at one time I have threatened to resign from the commission uh, when 19 IIT graduates committed suicide. I went to uh, Dick Zissing was very close to me. I went to him and told him Sir, that I'm going to resign. Why this is happening? 19 students coming from Shadukas in all the IITs in India, committed suicide. And in fact, uh, Kristen has also said something on this. So an ordinary, suppose a person is working in economics, Ministry of uh, Economic Affairs, or a person working in rural development, a, person, a civil servant is working in other departments. We don't uh, look at uh, the way in which he's committed uh, to the social caste. But if a person is working in Ministry of Rural Development and Medicine. This is what I have been also saying. It's very easy to evaluate a civil servant in terms of the indicators. If he works in a, a department like uh, 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 banking, or in a, but we don't uh, consider the kind of uh, influence that he uh, puts in in departments of welfare because it's long lasting. The influence is long lasting and the effects of the uh, uh, of the policies designed by the officer, implemented by the officer, will be for a longer period of time. We sometimes we may see and we may not see. Because the job of the civil servant is to deliver, the job of the civil servant is to deliver public goods and services. And Madhavangar knows what is a public good. In economics, we teach public good is one where there is no uh, what is called uh, rivalry, exploitability. That is, everyone can, these public service, the uh, public goods and services are to be delivered by the uh, civil servant. Who is there to deliver these public goods? The government formulates the, uh, the, uh, the, the out of the three important uh, wings of the state, the parliament, the, uh, uh, the parliament formulates policies and brings on tax. And the judiciary interprets the acts. Who will deliver the goods? It is only the civil servant. The civil servant is the executive. He is, the responsibility of the civil servant is to see that these public goods are delivered to the people. Perhaps we have failed to deliver the goods after the 1990. Things have changed after 1990. After the introduction of new economic policy, there is a change in the outlook of the administration in all parts of the world, particularly the new public management. When uh, Margaret Thatcher was the, I, I was also the victim of the Margaret Thatcher uh, government because I was selected for the Commonwealth Scholarship for uh, in London School of Economics. Everything is fixed. My uh, PhD director was that was in seventy eight, but uh, Margaret Thatcher withdrew the Commonwealth Scholarship. So I was a victim. That whatever it may be, she has introduced a new public management. New public management is not governance. It's not administration. But it is simply bringing the uh, the uh, nuances of the commercial, public, 
corporate uh, uh, parameters to decide the uh, uh, evaluation of the functioning of the civil service. That's not correct. In fact, they have also gone back. Uh, I'm told that when I visited uh, Australia, they were telling us that uh, they are coming, uh, uh, reverting back to the original uh, system of evaluation, system of uh, governance there. But anyway, uh, lots of things have happened uh, after the uh, civil war, uh, when, uh, the post-war period. Now, civil servants everywhere are, called, are considered as rent seekers. And we have the concept of less government, more governance. What is this? What are you talking about? How do you able to achieve this? Even in Ardhasastra also, Kautilya has uh, is, uh, mentioned about the functions of the Sotra, Dacha, and other kinds of uh, government uh, functions. But is it possible? This happened because of the fact that there was a conspiracy in the 50s and 60s in the United States of America. There are now studies, the, the, uh, the uh, what's called democracy in change. There's the latest book on democracy in change. Those who are in academic field and economics know that uh, there is a scholar, great scholar called Buchanan, James Buchanan. He was given the Nobel Prize also in 1986. But now the, uh, he, and uh, his public choice theory is responsible for the new public management. The public choice theory and the new public management have gone together in reducing the role of the civil servant in the functioning of the government. And they have, they have been bringing the management, the business management parameters into the civil service, and that has destroyed the element, human element, and the kind of emotions that the civil servant brings in in the administration of uh, whatever that is given. Why I'm saying this, in 1960, Buchanan was uh, promoted by one uh, corporate body in America, Coach Brothers. They invested so much money on him because after the Cold War era, after the Second World War, they want, they want, they have started attacking the uh, state. They have started attacking this particular socialist government and the concept of equality. And there are several theoretical and uh, philosophical uh, treatises written during that period. And they promoted uh, uh, James Buchanan, who has written on public choice theory. And he said that uh, uh, it is the uh, uh, civil servants, uh, the public servants, who are responsible for. Uh, Corruption, and therefore it is not. It is very difficult to reduce corruption unless we deal with the uh, public service. And therefore, they have used the uh, invisible foot, the concept of invisible foot of government. The invisible foot of government is a corrupt officer, and therefore, to reduce the uh, 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 government, reduce the government, improve the governance. This is the kind of, this is all conspiracy done by several agencies. And the conspiracy has gone to the extent of the, uh, what's called Washington consensus, consensus. And the Washington consensus was put on India. Washington consensus is nothing but uh, the World Bank, the Federal Reserve System in America, and the IMF. All the three offices are in Washington. And one Williamson, who was also given a Nobel Prize. I don't say that, I don't think that I'm bringing economics into this. This is because this is directly related to the administration. This is directly related to the governance. And why we are concerned about this? If the if the civil servant is not concerned about the common man, if the civil servant is not concerned about the underdog, what else is there? He can be like any other. That's why they are bringing the uh, the uh, uh, corporate people, uh, work, uh, corporate office, uh, corporate handcuffs into the civil service. They wanted to deal with the whole system of administration that was founded in, in the last century. Macaulay started the civil services system. And we know all that. And, uh, uh, you know, people talk about uh, B and Rao. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm digressing a little bit. People talk about B and Rao, and they say that B and Rao was responsible in drafting the Indian constitution. That's all 
I, I don't want to use a bad word. That's not correct. B.N. Rao was a civil servant. ICS officer, 1910 officer. He retired from service. He was brought as an advisor. And what was he was doing? He has given 19 page note. It was Baba Sahib Ambedkar who has done the constitution. And people do not know. It was Secretary of State, Lord Dundas. Secretary of State, Landas. Lord Dundas has written the 1935 act. It was his contribution. There was no contribution by uh, B.N. Rao to the 1935 act. People say that the 1935 act became what well, integrities are all there out of 365, 370 articles of um, what is to be put here. But what is the life that is given by Baba Sambedkar? It is all contributed by Baba Sambedkar. Not B. N. Rao. In fact, he was there. He was helping, no doubt. But generally, joint secretaries at the national level that the Gdankis were. It was Mr. Mukherjee who has done this job. And he was helping Baba Sambedkar in bringing notes and uh, writing notes. And all. I'm, I don't want to get into that. But why I'm saying this? There were great civil servants. B. N. Rao was a great servant. His brother was also a civil servant, a Reserve Bank of India, Rama Rao. So they are all from Karnataka. But what it may be, the civil service in this country is responsible in making the country an attractive investment destination. Today, it is because of the contributions made by the civil servants of the 60s and 70s. From 1991 onwards, things have changed. Coming to the the social accountability of the system. How do you assess his contribution? His contributions are great in the sense that not only that he has continued, uh, Madam Sunita was telling me about his contributions when he was there. Are, uh, Vasantar Devi noted perhaps uh, about his uh, tussle with Tanantaraman and how he has made adverse remark in, the, in his ACS. Now, ACS are very important for promotion. Uh, interestingly, uh, the now the, for uh, shortlisting officers for uh, higher grade, it is said not only 14 years uh, outstanding, perceived to be outstanding. See, perceived to be outstanding. Even if you produce 14, 15, years, 20 years record as outstanding throughout your career, but the committee should perceive that year. How do they perceive uh, uh, an officer from the uh, uh, from the weaker sections, they pursue different. But what I'm trying to say is, even then, P.S. Krishnan wanted that even in judiciary, higher judiciary, there should be reservation. He has argued for it. Uh, P.S. Krishnan has given in Dalit Manifesto. I'm, I have not prepared for, any, uh, for this lecture. Uh, I have seen only some, uh, some uh, notes here and there. P.S. Krishnan, has, in his Dalit Manifesto, and he has identified some active schemes and programs. If you list out those programs, you will find he has given importance to land. He has given for assets. He has given importance to education. He has given importance to several other things, which we generally, the Dalit activists, do not generally take into consideration. Only SAP. Special component plan is done now because special component is a part of the planning process. We have invested 56 lakh crores of rupees on planning, out of which 8 lakh crores should be given to the Dalits uh, in terms of this. But the government has not given 8 lakh crores. But what can we do? Can we go to the courts? It has been done in America. In the blacks have found that between 1920 and uh, 2000, in the United States of America, blacks lost 16 million acres of land their own land. The land was given to the blacks there. That was a different story altogether. And they found that $320 billion worth of uh, lands were taken away by the whites. This is equivalent to three important corporate houses like the Ford Foundation, Target, but again. Why I'm bringing this here is that Kristen has been working for the land distribution. His last article his last article on uh, land distribution, landlessness among the Dalits was in September 2019, published in Frontline. I have just uh, seen this. And uh, he said that this is a very interesting thing that I think if uh, officers or, uh, or activists are really interested, we must look at this, the, the problems of 
the landlessness among the scheduled castes. Christian has rightly said that as per the 1901 Act in Punjab, scheduled castes were considered as non-agricultural households. When they were considered non-agricultural households, when the land was distributed, scheduled castes were not given a piece of land, a single piece of land. Therefore, today, 90% of the scheduled castes in Punjab do not have land. The same is the case with Haryana. The same is the case with uh, uh, other uh, states. And in Andhra Pradesh, is 65% scheduled castes are landless. Therefore, uh, why I'm bringing this is that now we have in Andhra Pradesh, a, 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 a debate is going on that the, they want to take away the lands of the people, scheduled castes, and give them money. This is... People say that uh, some activists might also say, what's, what's wrong with you? Why are you uh, going against the, uh, the, uh, the buying the land from the scheduled caste, the farm partners, they have the government buying and give it to somebody. What is your problem? The problem is that there are studies to show that if a piece of land is held by a scheduled caste person, it improves its health care effect. It improves the enrollment ratios. It improves the capacities of the person to understand the society. If you give 10 lakhs rupees, 20 lakhs rupees, that will be, but that will be spent immediately or somewhere there, that's gone. But if you have a piece of land that will definitely improve the self-respect, improve your capacity and this asset value. Therefore, Tristan, it's on the basis of this Tristan was arguing in the last article. He, he passed there in 2019, I think November. He had the article was published 200, uh, September 2019. It's a very good article. One must look into it. And this has clearly said that Delhi should possess land because the value of lands have increased everywhere. And uh, many civil servants, uh, IS office must have worked in this area. But it is very clear that scheduled castes in different parts, except in West Bengal and Kerala, where Operation Burga and other kinds of things are there. But there also, I will bring into your notice very interesting thing that happened in Kerala also. So, PS system from the very beginning was not only working for the welfare of the people, but he was also working to improve the asset value, the human capital value of the Dalit population. Because when he was arguing for Rajiv Gandhi scholarships, he wanted post metric scholarships. And when he was arguing for the 50% reservation for scheduled caste women among the reserve communities, this is all. A, a, a systematic way of or critically he was looking at the uh, community, the, the, the different communities, especially because of the tribes and the back of classes. They are together, they are all marginal interests. Therefore, and uh, the issues that he has uh, planned for posterity are very important. Land is a very important issue today. And I will bring one important and then I will close in another five minutes from his home state, Kerala. I had the opportunity to examine a PhD dissertation. I still continue as a, an educator. The Changara land struggle. The Changara land struggle in Kerala is well known. Both scheduled castes and tribes were involved. And the land, uh, Bengal and uh, Kerala has passed uh, acts to distribute land. But in the Harrison case, in the Changara case, the land was held by the a Christian, the Harrison company. They, they found only 600 acres, but they had 1,800 acres. They have been fighting for several decades, and ultimately land was given. You know how much land the so struggling uh, Dalits got? They got 80 acres. Out of the 80 acres, as per the uh, dissertation I am giving, I don't know whether it is right or wrong, it is to be verified. Out of 80 uh, acres, 60 acres are given to the Ambedkar uh, school or something. Only 20 acres are given to the uh, some 100 or 200 uh, Dalits. Each one has got a piece of land that was sufficient for homestead. Kudi Kudi Appam, it's called. Interestingly, both in Kerala and Bengal and in other parts of the country, the the lands held by the scheduled caste, maybe shed, backward classes, not scheduled tribes because they were forest dwellers and that is a different story altogether. 
only the land homestead the uh, the, 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 the homestead is also recognized as land held by the scheduled caste if 65% of the uh, scheduled caste in andhra pradesh are landless the remaining 35% have that does mean they have land enough land it means that their homestead their house was recorded as a land held by the scheduled caste it is exactly that kerala though the scheduled caste fought for the lands there they were not given sufficient during the i don't want to say left party or other party because krishna like krishna i don't uh, have any uh, uh, of course for my critical uh, and other things i have an ideological uh, uh, underpinnings but in uh, kerala the same thing has happened Kerala has also another interesting uh, episode. The interesting episode is Keshavananda Bharati. The Keshavananda Bharati, the land was taken. He is a Mathadipati. Keshavananda Bharati is a Mathadipati. The Kerala government introduced land reforms. They want to take away his land. Then he gone to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court has revised the whole constitution. They found that there is a separate thing called the basic structure basic structure of the constitution is against kesavananda bharati out of 13 judges supreme court judges 11 judges gave different judgments they have now in other words what i am trying to say is that the judiciary the executive and the parliament are not in favor of the scheduled caste in this country because according to baba sambedkar the dalits are varna bahyas they are outside the system of the varna it is the varna that has created your property it is the varna that has created your personality it is the varna that has created you therefore unless you work against the varna system i have also introduced a, a new concept called varna bahyas are also ardha bahyas they are property less with the property in this country the concept of property is different the metachari and the what daya bhaga concept is why i am bringing this in this debate is that now the civil servants under the npm are less government more governance and the policy makers are trying to bring the american system of governance the american uh, judicial pronouncements into india but there in america everyone both the victims and the victimizer are settlers both the blacks and the whites are settlers but in india dalits are the original people of india therefore the system of property that they have developed in the states of america is different it is created by the judiciary to take away the this is what the um, blacks in america are saying they have created the property rights there through the judiciary but in india as we are varna bahyas and ardha bahyas we have denied the rights from the very beginning and during the last 70 years of independence how much land is given to us for instance in andhra pradesh every civil servant maybe madhavrao gar also knows 54 lakh acres were distributed to the in the combined state to scheduled castes how much land is held now among the scheduled castes therefore in the last article ps christian argued for the landlessness of the scheduled castes he wanted that land reforms should be undertaken continuously therefore ultimately whatever that he has done for the scheduled caste through his uh, 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 writings through his uh, uh, cabinet notes uh, through his uh, um, writings etc he has ultimately come to the perhaps not the conclusion but have the idea that unless scheduled caste are equipped with land and property nothing will happen i have one uh, disagreement with him on one occasion we had discussed about article 335 I wanted the Article 335 to be dropped from the Constitution. It is Article 335 that has created all the problems of reservation for reservation communities, including the black backward classes. In the Sahani case, 
no directly not related to the schedule class article 335 it is only article 335 and a little a small word is used there it is only in relation to the efficiency of administration the demands of the schedule class for appointments to be taken into consideration the judiciary is very intelligent they use the concept of precedent they bring anything else, uh, from anywhere and then in 1993 the Indra Sahani case was given. And then P.S. Christian was there to protect and became the uh, member of the Backward Classes Commission. In fact, at one stage in 2008, I think he called me and asked my permission to make use of my book, very popular book, Caste Based Reservation Human Development in India. Uh, that was in several countries. He has used that document, that book, in defending Backward Classes Reservation Higher Education Institution. But these things may not stand unless, unless schedule caste, as a schedule caste and backward classes or even schedule tribes, if all of them come together and see the vision of PS system for an enlightenment project, like continue to struggle, continue to struggle, because he has been there. In fact, where, when he came to, to Sakapat in 2018, it was a Adivasi struggle. Uh, Benjamin Wilson and he himself came. I was the chairman of the organizing committee and we met. And by that time, I found that he was not very in good uh, health. It's unfortunate that uh, he left us, but he has left a legacy of struggle, a legacy of intellectual uh, inputs that can be given in the formulation of policies. If a civil servant is really shortly committed and administratively have the equipment, it is possible that we can, in this country, uh, survive. We are, if we are surviving today, uh, because even uh, he has no uh, political uh, leanings, even 2018, though the, it was a BJP government, he was called and uh, he has, uh, because the Supreme Court judgment, that all kinds of judgments are nowadays coming against. In fact, uh, Article 16, was amended eight times. <laughs> why, is this, why is this? Why? He has written against the economic weaker sections, the 10% reservations. Uh, uh, therefore, uh, I don't want to, because I have not prepared a structured speech for this, uh, but I consider that P.S. Christian is a person socially committed as an officer, administratively uh, accountable to his, not only to his concerns, but also to the constitution of India. He said several times, it was the Indian constitution that came to my rescue at every time in his uh, fight against the officers and in fight in drafting uh, rules and regulations and the provisions in the acts. Uh, I pay my respect to P.S. Tristan. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very, very much, sir. It's a really an outstanding lecture, sir. We are really touched by your lecture. Thank you very, very much, sir. Sir, uh, uh, sir Kaki Madharao Garu and Malay Plakshan Garu, is there anything to share? Would you like to comment, sir? Yeah, I would like to say that uh, we have uh, Andhra Ambedkar in yes. the Parakalam. <laughs> Professor Chala. No, 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 and then uh, he can speak very effectively. Uh, I always keep saying that to Professor Tharwat and um, uh, Professor um, Chalam are, uh, we are really proud of uh, these two people to carry on the tradition of Ambedkar saying, read, 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 uh, write, 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 speak, speak, speak. Now, I'm glad that uh, he has um, 
been with us and um, he is continuing his effort. It's not as though I, I remember uh, reading, reading the, the, the David Ayal's uh, Ambedkar's Dinacharya. He says, uh, I have never seen Ambedkar without a book in his hand. Yeah. And I am sure that's what is Dr. Chalam doing. I don't think he's ever uh, there even for a minute without writing or reading. Yes. Uh, keep going and I wish you a long, long, uh, healthy life so that you can keep up the banner of the Indian, the Dalit Indian scholarship in this country. Thank you very much, Dr. Chalam. We are honored. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you sir. Me. Sir, uh, Malayapa Lakshmi Garu, is there anything? Sir, Malayapa Lakshmi Garu? Uh, anyway, sir, uh, I also keep on reading his articles since uh, my childhood, especially from Social Change and EPW, sir. Uh, <laughs> though I met you late, but uh, I started to read since my childhood, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, on this occasion, we are presenting. Uh, uh, hello. Uh, sir, sir, sir. Uh, <laughs> sir, sir, th <laughs> sir, thank you very much. Sir, you are the one who is 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 the one uh, theoretical point of view, look, Akunda, general, uh, okay, experience you get Chepata Mane, Erosunako, Chala Nachindi, and uh, experience in Chepe Vishal, Chala Equaga, uh, Mansun in Josta, Rudan in Josta, structured speeches and method in Josta, Kabati, Eros Chalanga, Rudan in Cheko, Martlad and Kunduna. Yes, Nijaniki. Base Krishna Nagar Lanti Oka Maha Yamantar Dani Digajam Kanta Guda Chala Pedda Mata Vadali. At twenty Victorinchim and a Matlat Kotaniki, Erozu, Samavisha Nirinch Koton, Tarati, the fourth lecture. Uh, I thankful to all others, to Krishna Nagar, Shankaranga, Rendu lectures, ne, CDS and SST officers for him combined Konasagistunari. Naktelsi the continue chest, Miki Kadaguda Dini, Majula Pedigan and Kedigan Undadu. Even Nivoka lectures in Gudoka, Pustakarupolo, Tiskaravali, Dan Gudoka, Tatiakamana, Kapretan, Zargali. Sunita Garguda Chala emotional, Chala personal experience in Chamat Ladder. Nijanika twenty a Kavali. Atla Idaru Chala Vamat Ladder, I think today. Shankaran Gari, Sachar, Satiman Garguda, Manato Undata, Amaku Marokasari, Vandanam, I mean, he is Samoishan Lo Manato, Chalaman the Baita YouTube, YouTube Lo Naru, but Zoom meeting Lo Na, Amaguda, Marokasari, I could take get the Lana Lem Gani, but Oksari Amagamaskar is to know. He Samoishamo, Christian Shankaran Gar Samoishan Lo. I take the land and a pillar a good scholarship land to the good on the Adi Madhuragaru, uh, Kerwin Gopalgari Daru Tama, uh, Gopa Manasto, uh, SC welfare hostels loja in a pillar lucky and a residential schools Gani, private schools Gani, Kakunda, a twenty car crown good and waste to them than good Alaku, Pala Rendu Kutum Balaku, Rendu Samstala Tarpanavalu, Samstalo Bagama in a particular. Pratyakamena uh Kutagetalu Telejestuna. He is Samavisham Tada Tadanantaram, his scholarship we shall and Nedine. Marukasar Chalangarki Nenu Maja Modat Sar Martlad and Malay Pajan Dol Martla and Panlo Badi Nano but uh and the Kshemi Kshemin Sali, he madala mito martla ledu. He karikramani uh Ramu and Sidujra Sala Samardavan Tanga and Ruinchar. Mikita Karakaman is Sidu Ragaru Konasagan. Am I on a martlar to demo? Something 
కృష్ణన్ గారి శాంతకృష్ణన్ గారు ఏమైనా మాట్లాడితే ఏమైనా మాట్లాడితే బాగుంటుంది ఒక రెండు నిమిషాలు అయినా మా కోసం this uh, very emotional uh, uh, yeah. the meeting that you have arranged uh, thanks uh, i thank mr chellam the thank professor you. chellam for this wonderful um, uh, way 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 you spoke about my husband ps krishnan i'm very grateful to you thank uh, you the, the, the uh, government yeah, of thanks. your organization is doing wonderful uh, for the for keeping up the memory of mr krishnan i'm yeah. really thankful to you you can say that. my daughter uh, please, my daughter, please yes please please please, you, please say a few words so uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting us in fact i need to give a special thanks to sunita garu who informed us and so it was a very very nice way for us to spend our father's birthday hearing about him and connecting with number of people who are very close to him and who meant a lot so um you know uh, thank you so uh, just want to comment a little bit on sunita garu's um, you know uh, small talk about father really spoken from the heart i could see the emotion and the connect and uh, mm-hmm. also shows a lot of commitment and sunita garu holds a special place uh in you know for our family and for uh, my husband uh, i mean sorry my father mr krishnan who always you know really loved her like a daughter she was also my classmate so it's wonderful for me oh. to uh, to you know see her speak like this and grow as uh, such a wonderful uh, officer with so much of governance uh, you know so much of commitment to the cause uh, she gave a lot of very practical uh, inputs about governance which i have heard my father uh you know all through uh, my growing years uh and um, just for the inf- and also mr chellam i mean uh, very nice hearing you i'm also in the space of human rights uh you know so yeah. very nice to have heard that you know you are you were part of amnesty and you know some of the things that you spoke are uh, uh, were a lot of uh, information and very valuable for me um uh, and mr madhav rao is somebody who i have always uh you know had the greatest regard and affection for i have uh, you know seen him uh, in our home all through my growing years so very nice to see him and really nice to hear about the awards that have been instituted i i think that will really go a long way it's more more about uh, you know um, giving focus to the cause uh, which is there uh, sunita garu mentioned about father's book uh in fact that has been translated into a number of languages so in case that needs you know you need in telugu or any other language that is available there is uh, uh, somebody who my father knows i forget uh, which msco public msco publication right which has translated so in case you want to spread it more because i think the really the point that is there in our minds is how do we have uh, more mr ps krishnans more mr shankarans more mr b d sharmas more mr madhav raj more miss lalli uh, you know sunita ji garu uh, in the new you know the new breed of officers who are you know very different it's a very different world that they are joining in but how do we have more such people who are really you know understanding the social causes and bending governance or taking governance to them so i think that is something which is very important for us uh, all of us who are interested in this cause so uh, thank you so much i mean it's it's really been wonderful spending this time with you and thank you for the opportunity uh, given to me to just say a few words uh, on this occasion thank you madam the center for dalit studies and acs officers forum dalit bhojan fra ee karyakram nirvahistana chaala santoshanga undi mee మీ అభిప్రాయం కూడా మమ్మల్ని మరింత ప్రోత్సహిస్తాయి అనుకుంటాను నవ్ హ్యాండ్ ఓవర్ టు సిద్ధోజరావు మేడం ఐ అగ్రీ విత్ యూ మేడం సునీత మేడం గారు నిజంగా రియలీ స్పోక్ ఫ్రమ్ హర్ హార్ట్ అండ్ ఐ రియలీ టచ్డ్ బై దాట్ ఐ అగ్రీ విత్ యూ అండ్ ఆల్సో వన్ థింగ్ ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు షేర్ విత్ యూ ఆల్ పీపుల్ మేడం శాంత మేడం గారితో జేఎన్యూలో మేము కలిసి చదువుకున్నాం మేడం పెద్దదైనా మేము ఇద్దరం కలిసి చదువుకున్నాం జేఎన్యూలో థ్యాంక్ యూ మేడం ఆఫ్టర్ లాంగ్ టైమ్ ఐఎమ్ ఏబుల్ టు సీ యూ నవ్ ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు రిక్వెస్ట్ ఆన్ దిస్ అకేషన్ వీఆర్ ప్రెసెంటింగ్ 
శ్రీమతి కాకి మాణిక్యమ్మ శోభనాద్రి క్యాష్ అవార్డ్ టు ఏ ట్రైబల్ గర్ల్ స్టూడెంట్ హూ స్కోర్డ్ హైయెస్ట్ మార్క్స్ ఇన్ ది టెన్త్ క్లాస్ అమాంగ్ గర్ల్స్ స్టూడెంట్స్ ఆఫ్ తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ హౌ డంబ్లీ రిక్వెస్ట్ శ్రీ కాకి మాధవరావు గారు ఫార్మర్ చీఫ్ సెక్రటరీ ఆఫ్ కంబైండ్ ఏపీ టు అనౌన్స్ ది అవార్డ్ అవార్డ్ సార్ ప్లీజ్ దిస్ నేమ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ యంగ్ గర్ల్ ఈస్ ధరావత్ సాయి హరీష she talked uh, from the scheduled tribes candidates uh, thank you sir is there anything sir that's all that's all okay thank you sir uh uh or uh, yes, kindly uh, check the uh uh, uh st- the certificate and uh, cash award also uh and also sir is there anything malleppa lakshmi garu no no we can close sir nothing okay. thank you now, like ra, 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 ramu will say a vote of thanks yes sir ramu garu vote of thanks cheppandi uh hello everyone uh we thank you all the participants first for uh, attending the meeting and uh, i personally thank from uh, on behalf of center for dalit studies officers forum and uh, dalit bhavan friend uh, professor k s chalamgaru for the wonderful lecture you have given and i would like to thank sunita madam uh, for her uh, excellent speech about p uh, s krishnan garu and i would like to thank ps krishnan sir's family members for attending this meeting and making it a wonderful memory for us and uh, i would like to thank kaki madarao sir and uh, uh, all the other speakers and participants uh, we would like to continue this program for more years to come uh, we would like to continue it forever i can say and i would like to thank mallepal lakshmi sir uh, for giving me this opportunity for conducting this meeting online uh sidoji rao garu we can close it okay thank you so much okay. to all dignitaries thank you sir thank, thank you, you sir thank, thank you, you thank you sir thank you thank you shubhash thank you bye bye thank you madam <laughs>